Thank you very much. Pleasure to be here. All right. Tell us about WiseP and what you're celebrating at MarketSite today. So we are a cybersecurity company, very strong focus of Internet of Things. We also design and produce our microprocessors that you put into connected things like cars, like drones, like uh, satellites. And in the last year, we have been focusing on blockchain technology, on how to secure the blockchain, how to secure digital assets on the blockchain. And today, we have done something for world first, which is connect a satellite, which we sent. Actually, Wiseki sent with a SpaceX satellite January this year. The satellites are sending a code, an encrypted code, which is activating, minting a NFT on a blockchain in cooperation with Casper Network. And the NFT is actually a brook chill. So today we had her with her here celebrating these wolfers where a first ever time NFT was minted. The reason we did that is to show how ultra secure environments are required to do this because as you probably know, there's a lot of being compromising NFTs, a lot of platform lost NFTs, a lot of celebrities got hacked on NFTs. So we need to bring cybersecurity expertise. It's something which is growing very fast, which is the NFT industry, but it's not yet properly secure. It's actually amazing, but it, it coincides with the fact that going to the space is easier now than it was a few years ago, thanks to SpaceX, democratization of the space. So companies like us now can be uh, using that facility. And in the other side, uh, blockchain is getting mature, right? I mean, we are the third year of full deployment of blockchain technologies. Uh, we are realizing that this is the most secure way of decentralizing information. So making information difficult to hack because it's not centralized in one place, which is the problem we are facing now. It was so uh, making a space meaningful. I mean, why you need a space? We know how to use a space for communication, for pictures, for geolocation. But what about using a space for establishing trusted connections? A space is obviously more difficult to go to the space to hack a server. So that is to inverse the model, rather to provide the server security on servers that are going to be located on, on land, we put those servers in the space. So this is the beginning. Those are Pico satellites. They are very tiny satellites. The, for the moment, we use them for IoT. So imagine a cargo traveling in the sea that needs to be tracked real time by the satellite to be sure that the cargo has not deviated or the merchandise has not been compromised. So that's the uh, type of usage we do for the satellites. And thinking about current events that we're dealing with right now, how will cybersecurity continue to play an integral role in our society? It is key because as you realize, uh, the world is becoming fractured by a superpower ecosystem. So you have Russia and Chinese, United States, Europe. But in the future, you need to have your own independency. For instance, we have a huge dependency on microchips now being designed in, in Asia. What about if uh, something happens in Asia like it happens now in Europe with, uh, with Russia? So, so we need to, countries need to learn how to be self-sustainable, self-secure, and self-in control, what you call uh, internet sovereignty. So you need to own those assets. For historical reason, uh, computers, companies, then they have been designing microchips, another has been acquired, some of them they are not anymore operational. So the idea for me from being an European and being a Swiss was Switzerland, Europe needs to have its own independency. We cannot depend on anybody in the, in the future. So it's a geopolitical uh, vision also on how the internet uh, next generation, what we call the web 3.0 is going to emerge, which is totally different from the web 2.0. Web, web 3.0 is more related about trust, who you trust on your data, who you trust on your cloud, who you trust on designing your microchips. All that is essential, and you need companies like Wiseki to solve that problem. And something important to me, I understand you used to be an adjunct professor. What was the motivation behind educating others? It is essential because, as I say, we are in a trust deficit uh, generation. Uh, people absorb news in an instant way. Uh, we, we need to provide a, a, a trust framework. Uh, we need to reestablish, actually, in many cases, trust. Trust is going to be uh, uh, one of the key aspects of the future, what you call the, the Internet of Things or the fourth industrial revolution. Uh, trust is morphing from traditional things you trust to, th to new things that you don't know if you should trust. And this is the role of company like Wiseki and teaching and, and bringing uh, the, the young generation to absorb those knowledges and those fundamental moral principles are also very important. We need to inject morality into the technology. 
I mean, the UN for me was inspirational. When you work in the, in the UN, it's because you have a mission. My mission at that time was to make the internet safe. Uh, the problem with the UN, as we can see currently what is happening, has a limitation on what you can execute inside the UN because as soon as a project like that becomes very big, then obviously you have the politics that get involved in the UN. So we needed to move to the private sector. I did that as a continuation of my mission statement, which is to secure the internet. The web was invented in Geneva. You know, I was part of that generation that worked in the zero ground zero of the, of the web. We realized at that time that the web was not secure, that identity was not there, that people, data was not protected. Actually, the human doesn't exist on the web. The web doesn't know that we are a person. So we need to provide that type of layer of security. Now, what, that's what Wiseki has continued doing, together with many other activities that I do. So my teaching part was a way also to combine with the UN and the private sector in completing the, uh, the picture. Totally. Which is, is interesting. I mean, it's just moving so quick. Totally. Uh, and that's the problem, and especially with AI and the combination of AI with blockchain, with big data, with quantum computer, with IoT. All those things are merging now. Before they worked separately, now they are increasing exponentially each other. So humans, we are lineal. We are not exponential in everything we do. We need to go step by step where the technology is exponential. So uh, it, we are already nearly out of control. So in order to provide control to the exponentiality of, of technology, we need to develop what we call switches. I mean, we have to be able to shut down the thing if the thing is totally crazy, which might happen. I mean, we are in a currently, even today, with the geopolitical tensions, technology could go crazy if the humans do not have the final say. And, and we are not yet there. I mean, we are, we, are, we are in that point of history where we have to do the right things to control the technology and not let the technology to control us. We are at a very critical inflection point totally. for a number of reasons. Totally. Carlos, we appreciate the insight. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you very much for your questions. Yeah.